I'm Owen Bigline. This is the Inside Edge video blog. I want to do another blog. It's that time of year to follow up on the, some of the ridiculousness at Vancouver City Hall. And every six months or so, I'll do one of these. And, uh, you know, I've talked about this before, how we just cannot get anything built in Vancouver. I've done many blogs on this. If you're not following me on Twitter, please do have a look. I post all kinds of articles from developers, uh, from uh, uh, commercial realtors on the current state of trying to get both rental buildings put in the city, uh, as well as building condo towers and even in some cases more office towers and getting things rezoned. Uh, it's incredibly difficult, continues to maybe even be getting more difficult, it seems, every year. Uh, and, you know, the other thing, of course, is these ridiculous view corridors that I've talked about many times here, where we, we're, we're building a, a, what do we call it here, a tabletop skyline. We've got some of the most expensive real estate anywhere in North America, yet we continue to be, build these mid, low, mid-rise condo towers. 25, 30, 35 story towers. When I'm under the belief I've been saying for many years here, we should be starting to build some 60, 70 story towers here. And it's been in the news here quite a bit. I'm starting to see this pick up steam with the how expensive and limited the land is. Why aren't we building higher, more density here? Now, it's been in the news here, the uh, Holborn Group has been trying to get the Hudson Bay parking lot behind the Hudson Bay there, it takes up an entire block, Georgia Street, all the way down through to Dunsmere, along Richard Street there. They've held this property for like five or six years and they've been trying to submit, you know, zoning and, and, and various uh, uh, designs for this parcel of land. It's a prime parcel of land in the center of the city. They want to build a, something like a 70 story tower on there, which I'm all for, as well as some smaller towers, a hotel, shopping, retail. It's massive. Uh, I posted some links to it on my on my Twitter feed. But of course, they're getting all kinds of pushback. And, you know, there were some funny comments on Twitter on this, too, about how Vancouver City Hall, you know, forget 60 or 70 or 80 stories. It'll get overturned. You know, they're, they're going to end up building a stub on that, on that prime piece of land, a stub, which is 30 stories or something, 35, maybe 40, when we should be building far higher than that. You know, it's crazy. I, I don't understand these view quarters. Maybe someone can comment on it. You know, I understand we want to keep, you know, the backdrop of the mountains there. Uh, but I think by building, a, you know, a dozen or so taller towers interspersed is not going to make a whole lot of difference. You're still going to have some very nice views of the mountains uh, when you're driving over the Granville Street Bridge or the Canby Street Bridge. You know, but I don't really understand it. You know, I've blogged too in the past here. I, I tweeted about, you know, a heritage home, a so-called heritage home in the West End on Thurlow Street in my neighborhood. Absolute prime, prime piece of property. It has an old dilapidated tar paper shack on there. There is no heritage value to this. I just sent a photo, posted it to my Twitter. They've been working on this for a year now, this house. They're going to convert this into, I don't know, three or four dark, old one bedroom or two bedroom rental units uh, on a prime piece of land. They've essentially been working on this for a year now. They've lifted the house obviously to get some basement space and they've also moved the house over about two feet. Uh, they've been at it for about a year. They basically completely hollowed this house out, out now. I took a photo of it. There's nothing left of this house. It's just old dilapidated wood uh, it should have been bulldozed. There's no heritage value to this. Now, this is a prime lot that they could have built, hey, even just a 10-story concrete building in here, 15 or 20. In the, in the near surrounding area, we've got 25 and 30-story towers. So I don't know why they couldn't have built something, but you know, this is a classic example of why our prices are so expensive. This is a prime piece of land in the West End that they're gonna spend two years renovating a tar paper shack, and it is, to create four or five housing units when they could have built 50 or 60 quite easily and not had any real influence on the density or it wouldn't have looked out of place whatsoever. That is a prime parcel of land that is now going to be off the market for 50 or 60 years. You won't build on it now. And the same thing, I tweeted some photos of a development over on Burnaby. Burn, this is Burnaby just west of Burrard in the West End again. 
Beside it is a 30-story tower. This was a vacant lot. I was under the impression that they were going to build at least a 15 or 20-story concrete tower beside this. But no, I was wrong. They ended up building a five-story wood frame, if you can imagine. Five-story wood frame, I think it's a total of 11 units when they could have easily built 100 units on this parcel of prime, prime West End land. Quiet street on Burnaby Street, just off Burrard. Beside it is a 30-story tower. You're going to be in the shadow of this 30-story tower. It's ridiculous. I don't understand it. Now, again, this is a prime parcel of land that could have had a tower on it that is now off the market for 50 or 60 or 70 years. And this is why we have our prices. People ask me all the time, why is Vancouver so expensive? This is it. When we do get land to build, we underbuild. We should be building 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 story towers. Go down the I-5 to Seattle. They've got a number of 70 story towers. I mean, you can go to Cleveland. Cincinnati has 60 and 70 story towers. Now, I know they don't have the views we've got with the mountains, but we need to be building a lot more density here, for sure. And this is part of the reason why I'm bullish long-term on owning a piece of downtown Vancouver. Because City Hall, I don't think, will ever get its act together. We trickle in supply, and when a prime piece of land does come up where we could build some density and 100 or 150 units. Instead, we build a four or five unit dilapidated tar, tar paper shack, or we build a five story wood frame, <laughs> 11 units, when you could have easily done 70 or 80 on that lot and it wouldn't have looked out of place at all. So this is one of the reasons why you want to get a piece of downtown Vancouver. We're not building. You know, it takes forever to get anything done watch my Twitter feed on, on what these developers have to go through, not just with the city, but they're also, of course, the NDP government. Nobody feels safe in dealing with them. That's why we've, we're going to get this coil spring effect where nothing's coming online, 40,000 people moving into the lower mainland. We're not building enough. We never were building enough, and now we're really not building enough. And then when we get a good parcel of land that we can build on, we underbuild on it. So again, buy a piece of Vancouver while the getting is good. It's, I don't know if it's ever going to get any better. Here's two prime pieces of downtown land that are off the market now for 50 or 60 years, never to be built on. Yet, the population keeps growing. Crazy. Follow me on Twitter. I think you'll find some interesting articles on there and, and have a look for yourself. I'm Owen Bigland. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.